The third part of that verse is be thankful in everything. So you see, he uses the words nothing, everything, everything. Everything, be thankful. There are things that happen again to us that you can't be thankful for. You may not be thankful for what happened, but you can be thankful that God is with you, that he'll work through that problem, that he'll get you through it, that he'll give you wisdom, that he'll uh, give you grace, that he won't allow anything to happen to you that will destroy his plan or purpose for his life. And you begin to turn that, the most difficult situations, God, I thank you, you still love me. I thank you that I'm your child. I thank you that you're gonna provide for me. I thank you're gonna resolve the situation. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you. That's the picture of the sovereignty of God, your Father, and everything has to be filtered through your Father that comes to you. And there's no such things as accidents in the life of the children of God child of God. There are incidents, no accidents. And if I can really believe that, that the Father is in control. He knows what's good for me. He knows the pain I'm going through. He will get me through it. And I begin to thank God that I belong to him. That somehow, some way, at some point, he's going to turn this. And when you develop an attitude of gratitude, here's what begins to happen. It adjusts your outlook on life. You can become negative so easily and so can I about things that happen and things you worry about and get together with people and talk about the economy or the political situation or the leadership in the country and you become neg negative and you talk about it and the more you talk about it, again, anxiety begins to build. But when you become thankful that God is the ultimate ruler. God is in control of the, of the universe. And God has never abdicated his throne. He's on the throne. But if we focus on people, on men, and what they're doing, and how they're doing it, uh, we get uptight. But I realize, and we'll talk in our country about leadership and so forth, and I say, but let's remember who's in ultimate control. It's not our president, it's not this person or that person, it's God. And let's just thank God together that he's in control, he's working out his sovereign divine purposes, he's orchestrating all the events and no purpose of God's will be thwarted, he will not be denied, he's building his church, he's building his kingdom and he's given us the privilege to be a part of it. It changes your outlook on life when you're thankful. But when you're griping and negative and complaining, it has the adverse effect, and again, it blocks the Spirit of God from flowing freely through you. So it adjusts our outlook on life, and it brings our will into harmony with God's will. Otherwise, I'm at adverse per This is the will of God concerning you. So I need to get my will to say, okay, God, I don't understand this, I don't like this, I am anxious about it. You're very honest with God about it. But I want to align myself with you. And I, I don't know how you're going to work this situation out, how it's going to be resolved, but I trust you, I trust you. And that brings our will into harmony with God's will. We've said this, but it affirms God's sovereignty, love, and wisdom. God, you're sovereign. You love me. You're wise beyond comprehension. And I trust you. It pleases God. God is pleased when his children trust him. A heavenly father, but a human father, when I know my kids trust me, and they're worried about something, and they're fearful about something. But Dad, you're there. You're my father. You'll take care of me. I know you will. And they come running to you sometimes when they're younger. And they just want to be held in your arms. You're my dad, everything's going to be all right. And that's the way with us. He's our father. Yes, he's the God of the universe, but he's your father. And he can be trusted. And that pleases God when his children trust him. And again and again in scripture, just those simple words, 
God is saying, trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me. I know what I'm doing. It releases the generosity of God. Once I get, again, my will, together with his will, I'm trusting him, God is free to work, and he'll work in wonderful ways. It releases the generosity. But when I deny God, and I try to resolve it on my own and do my own thing, sometimes God says, well, if you don't want my help, <laughs> go for it. But when I come back to him, and I say, Lord, I don't even want to try to dictate to you how to resolve this problem, this thing that's stressing me out, that's worrying me, but I trust you to do it. That releases God to work in that situation. And when I'm thankful to God, it reminds me of God's faithfulness in the past. I have to stop and review. I've had many situations in the past. God's got me through them. God has been faithful. So why am I worried about this one? <laughs> why am I tight here? And so as I go through being thankful for all that God has done for me in the past, I find the tension, the anxiety, the stress going, going out of me. And it relaxes us. Uh, the minute I let go of anxiety, I am relaxed. I'll give you a couple of quick illustrations here. One, I was going to Brazil one time to meet a friend. And uh, we were planning some very important meetings. He was going to meet me there. I had about an hour or so at the airport before we needed to, uh, my plane departed. But I got stuck in the back of a line and I could not get through the passport check and get to him. And I felt myself getting very tense, very uptight because I could see him out there, we needed to talk, we needed to plan, the line was moving slowly, and it was all about me, I've got to get out there. And I, you know, very uptight. Finally, the Lord spoke, Dennis, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your requests be known unto God. And I began to pour out my heart before God, and I felt, just a relaxation come. And about that time, a lady that was standing next to me that I had totally ignored because I was focused all on me. She said to me, sir, may I ask you a question? I said, certainly, what, what do you have in mind? She said, do you believe in angels? I said, yes. She said, well, what, what do you believe about angels? And I, and I told her briefly. And I said, why do you ask? She says, because I see a lot of light around you. I thought that was very strange. And I said, lady, I said, if you see any light around me, it's Jesus Christ because he's the light of the world. She said, do you believe that? I said, I believe it with all my heart. And I said, uh, what are you doing here in Sao Paulo? She said, oh, I'm coming here to do lectures on the New Age movement. She does, did them worldwide. And I said, I sense you're seeking after God. She said, I have been since I was a teenager. I happen to have a book of my briefcase. I brought one just before I left explaining the gospel. I gave it to her, we've corresponded. I don't know that she's trusted Christ yet, but I've been able to send her books and share the gospel with her, and had a beautiful letter received from her. But I thought many times how I would totally have missed that opportunity if I was filled with anxiety and worry about seeing him. I got to see my friend, we got it resolved. God was in charge of that. So important that we follow that scripture. Be anxious for nothing, don't put a period there. Pray about everything. Release that anxiety to God and be thankful. And the peace of God, which surpasses human understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And that will be another major blockage removed by the grace of God. If you can get rid of guilt, deal with bitterness and anxiety, trust me, you'll be able to experience the untroubled heart. 
While we continue being a benevolent project, your kind donations will continue to be vital in fulfilling the calling of TVS Ministry. We do count on your gracious support and cooperation. For detailed information, please visit tvsseminary.com. Developing an attitude of gratitude when you're filled with anxiety is really key to experiencing God's victory over anxiety. Thankfulness is a quality that we need to develop. One man who successfully developed it was Matthew Henry. He's an Old Testament uh, commentator, and he had an experience one night. He was out for a walk and he was robbed. He came home later that evening and wrote in his journal these words. Let me be thankful, first, because I was never robbed before. Second, because although they took my wallet, they didn't take my life. Third, because although they took my all, it was not much. And fourth, because it was I who was robbed, not I who robbed. Now that's a man that learned the power of thankfulness. And God has given us that wonderful prescription for peace. And if we follow God's prescription, take every part of it, and follow that carefully, he promises that the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard our hearts. Our hearts will be free. They'll stand like a sentinel before our hearts, keeping out all the intruders of anxiety. But we need to follow every part of the prescription. Be anxious for nothing. Pray about everything and be thankful for everything. And keep working that one through and you will experience peace that he promises to give. Proverbs 14.30 says, A heart at peace gives life to the body. Psalm 94.19 When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought joy to my soul. So important that we follow God's directions. Now we've talked about guilt, bitterness, and anxiety. I would encourage you to review each of these and here's some study questions that may help you uh, go back and work through each of these areas. First, try to identify which of these common problems is the greatest struggle in your life. Is it guilt? Is it bitterness? Is it anxiety? Just start with one of those. Just zero in on one of those problem areas. And then write down, how have I attempted to deal with it in the past? And how do I intend to deal with it in the future? Another uh, exercise, is there any specific sin that you have confessed that you still feel guilty about? If so, why do you think you still feel guilty? That's on the guilty component. Another question, how have you been hurt most deeply in the past and by whom and how have you processed that hurt? Fourth question, have you freely and forgiven everyone who has sinned against you? If not, why not? Number five, what presently causes you the most worry or concern? And then review Philippians 4, 6, and 7 and follow God's prescription. That's review questions and they're important to do. You can hear a lecture, you can take notes, but if you don't apply and you don't work it through, it's not going to profit you. So especially on those three critical areas that tend to create blockages in our heart. You need to get rid of the guilt and God has an answer for your guilt. You need to get rid of the bitterness, and God has told you how, forgiveness. And you need to deal with anxiety. He's giving you the prescription. But it's up to us now, it's up to you to follow that.